Section 3 Proverbs chapters 25 to 29 More Proverbs of Solomon Proverbs chapters 25 to 29 begin a new section of the book of Proverbs that was added to the canon of scripture about 200 years after Solomon's death. The kingdom of Israel was divided into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah because of Solomon's spiritual adultery. Hothi was the last king of northern Israel, and he reigned in the capital city of Samaria. At the time when chapters 25 to 29 were added to the canon, Hezekiah reigned over the southern tribes of Judah and Benjamin in the city of Jerusalem. During the four year of Hezekiah's reign, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, besieged the city of Samaria and carried the northern tribes into captivity. The kingdom of Judah is now the last of what remains of the once glorious kingdom of Israel. Therefore, many of the warnings and instructions are repeated in this section of Proverbs. The Book of Proverbs Chapter 25 Proverbs 25 verses 1 to 28 These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah king of Judah copied out. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The heaven for height and the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refresheth the soul of his masters. Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith, and vomit it. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. A man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul, and a sword, and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth, and a foot out of joint. As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nitre, so is he that singeth songs to him. Heavy heart. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink, for thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. The north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance of backbiting tongue. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. It is not good to eat much honey. So, for men to search their own glory is not glory. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Opening Sentence Proverbs 25 verse 1 These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah king of Judah copied out. This chapter begins a new section in the book of Proverbs as indicated by the later edition of these particular Proverbs during King Hezekiah's reign. It is notable that this occurred during a time when the northern tribes of the kingdom of Israel had been carried away into captivity. Only the southern kingdom of Judah remained, and they would only continue to do so if they obeyed God's word. In the first year of King Hezekiah, he had the temple, the city, and the land of Judah thoroughly searched and cleansed from everything that would offend God, 2 Chronicles 29 verses 1 to 5, 16, 30 colon 14, 31 colon 1. 
Section three of Proverbs, which includes chapters 25 to 29, is marked by more frequent usage of the words as and like in order to draw comparisons. Notice verses 12 to 14, 19 to 20, and 28 of this chapter. Chapter 25 begins by praising an honorable king for searching out a matter to the glory of God, but it ends with a warning to men who search for their own glory. Finding the theme, the search for what is glorious. Proverbs 25 verses 2 to 3, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The heaven for height and the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. The search for what is glorious requires wisdom. The search for wisdom begins and ends in God's holy word. Job 11 verse 7, Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? Psalm 145 verse 3, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. The only way to find out God is through what he has revealed in his written word. The scriptures do not contain all the knowledge of God, but it contains all that he has chosen to reveal to mankind presently. The heart of a king, or any man, is unsearchable by another man, but not by God. When a man searches his own heart, he finds wickedness, not glory. Proverbs 21 verse 2, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Jeremiah 17 verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Take away and reveal. Proverbs 25 verses 4 to 5, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. In order to reveal what is pure and glorious, what is unclean and wicked must be taken out of the way. Someday, God will purge away all the wicked and everything that offends in his kingdom, both in heaven and on earth. Matthew 13 verse 41, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Put not forth. Proverbs 25 verses 6 to 7, Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. It is more glorious for a man to humble himself instead of exalting himself. Proverbs 16 verse 18, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Luke 14 verse 11, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Go not forth. Proverbs 25 verses 8 to 10, Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. In the search for glory, a warning is given against rushing into a situation where one has not made a thorough search of the matter. Jesus taught his followers to discuss a matter privately first, then with two or three witnesses, and finally disclose it to the congregation. The leadership of the congregation would then issue a ruling on the matter. Matthew 18 verses 15 to 17 were over, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. A fitting word. Proverbs 25 verses 11 to 13, a word fitly spoken, is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refresheth the soul of his masters. A wise reprover and a faithful messenger will speak truth in a manner that is fitting. The word that he speaks will be beautiful, true, refreshing, and faithful to God's word, which is glorious. A false word. 
Proverbs 25 verse 14, whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. Like Lucifer, who boasted against God, Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 14, and claimed to possess what was not his, the book of Jude contains a warning about false brethren who will be hiding among believing Israel during the tribulation, tempting them to sin. Jude 4, for there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Jude 12, these are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Soft words. Proverbs 25 verse 15, by long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaketh the bone. Soft words are not a good thing, especially when they are false words and flattery. Psalm 55 verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Sufficient words. Proverbs 25 verses 16 to 17, hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith, and vomit it. Withdraw thy foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. Honey, in the context of this chapter, is that of man's own glory. See verse 27. Men often boast of their own accomplishments to their neighbors. Verse 17 instructs such a man to depart from his neighbor's house before his neighbor becomes weary of hearing his words. A false witness and an unfaithful man. Proverbs 25 verses 18 to 19, a man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. In contrast to the wise reprover of verse 12 and the faithful messenger of verse 13, who both bring blessings upon those who hear them, this false witness and unfaithful man brings harm, pain, and misery. A cruel word. Proverbs 25 verse 20, as he that taketh away a garment in cold weather, and as vinegar upon nitre, so is he that singeth songs to an heavy heart. Taking a garment from a man in cold weather could cause him to freeze, and adding vinegar to potassium nitrate could burn him. Both would be considered cruel, as is singing songs to a man with a heavy heart. This is not simply a sad person. Proverbs 31 indicates that this man is at the point of death. Proverbs 31 verse 6 gives strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Overcome evil with good. Proverbs 25 verses 21 to 22, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink, for thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Instead of harming their enemies, Israel was instructed to help them. Previous chapters of the book of Proverbs indicate that Israel's enemies were from their own household. The Apostle Paul quotes this proverb in regard to loving unbelievers and not avenging wrong. In man's search for glory, this would be the godly response. Romans 12 verses 17 to 21 recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as leith in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him, if he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Drive away. Proverbs 25 verse 23, the north wind driveth away rain, so doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. A backbiting tongue is a terrible sin that needs to be driven away, and it is good to be angry at sin. Ephesians 4 verse 26, be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Choose that which is better.
Proverbs 25 verse 24, it is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wide house. This verse is a repetition of Proverbs 21 verse 9. In man's search glory, a choice must be made between being temporarily comforted with evil or suffering for eternal good. The brawling woman was covered in chapter 21. Good news. Proverbs 25 verse 25 as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. As the good word fitly spoken by the wise reprover, and like the faithful messenger that brought refreshment to the soul, so is this good news from a far country. Israel often disobeyed God's will, but God could still bring to pass the promises he made in spite of their rebellion. God could even call a stranger from a far country to execute his will, thus proving that he is always faithful to his word. God's faithfulness to his word is good news for all mankind. Isaiah 46 verses 9 to 11 remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country. Yeah, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. Not good. Proverbs 25 verse 26, a righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. Throughout the book of Proverbs, it is the wicked that fall, not the righteous. This proverb is pointing out something that is not glorious. A good fountain provides refreshing, sweet water. A corrupt spring contains water that is bitter and poisonous. James 3 verse 11 doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Not glorious. Proverbs 25 verse 27, it is not good to eat much honey. So, for men to search their own glory is not glory. Only the honey of God's word is glorious. There is no glory in man's glory. Jeremiah 9 verses 23 to 24, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness, in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Conclusion Proverbs 25 verse 28, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. A city that is broken down and destroyed can no longer produce anything good. Walls are a city's first line of defense, so a city without walls is vulnerable to attacks by the enemy who would enter and take away the spoils. A man who will not choose to exercise authority over his own spirit according to the word of God will choose to go his own way instead. Man's way always leads to destruction. God's way always leads to glory. Summary. All men have the free will to choose how they will spend their lives. They can spend it in search of the glory of God, which is found in his written word, or they can spend it in a vain search for their own glory. Although men have the free will to make their own choices, they cannot resist the consequences of their decisions. Dispensational Consideration During King Hezekiah's reign, the book of Proverbs, as well as other Old Testament scriptures, was still being added to and canonized. Today, the scriptures are complete. In times past, men were expected to diligently search the copies of the scriptures which they possessed, and the same is true today. When the Apostle Paul wrote about God's unsearchable judgments and the unsearchable riches of Christ, the Holy Spirit was still revealing things to Paul that had been kept secret since the world began, Romans 16 verse 25. God's plan for the nation of Israel to have dominion over the earth was prophesied throughout the Old Testament. However, God's plan and purpose for heaven, which includes the reconciliation of those governmental offices in the heavenly places usurped by Satan and his angels, Ephesians 3 verse 10, 6 12, was not revealed in the Old Testament. 
This mystery was first revealed to the Apostle Paul, Ephesians 3 verse 3, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. These heavenly offices will be filled by the new creature, which is the body of Christ, made up predominantly of Gentiles. This plan was unsearchable because God did not reveal it in the scriptures until he made it known to the Apostle Paul. Romans 11 verse 33, O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out! Ephesians 3 verse 8 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Life Application A believer's duty is to search the scriptures daily to see if the things being spoken from the pulpit or from other sources are indeed the truth. Acts 17 verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Believers are not to glory in men, nor to think of themselves more highly than others, but to esteem every member of the body of Christ alike. Romans 12 verse 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Philippians 2 verse 3, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 21, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. The sinful condition of man makes it impossible for him to have rule over his own spirit. No man except Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, was able to live a perfect and sinless life. The only way for a man to live a sinless life is to be identified with Jesus Christ. When an ungodly sinner trusts in the payment that Jesus paid on the cross, his faith is accounted for righteousness. The sinner is instantly baptized by the Spirit into the body of Christ, becoming one with him. This identity with Christ severs the bond with man's sinful flesh in an operation of God made without hands, Colossians 2 verse 12. By faith, a man reckons himself dead unto sin and alive unto God though the Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 6 verse 11. Jesus Christ receives all the glory. Proverbs 26 verse 27, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. Suitable behavior and fitting rewards are the topic of Proverbs 26. Proverbs chapter 25, Homework. Read, it will be beneficial to read through the history of King Hezekiah in 2 King Hezekiah in 2 Kings 1620 to 2021 and 2 Chronicles 28 colon 27, 32 colon 33. It will increase your understanding of the condition of the southern kingdom of Judah during the time of his reign. As well as helping you understand the times in which these proverbs were found, copied and added to scripture. Note. The word copied is found only one time in a King James Bible, which is here in Proverbs 25 verse 1. The word copy is found nine times. It is a good idea to study through these and understand that men have been making copies of the Word of God since it was first written. You may like to search for other terms as you have time. Right is found 89 times. The first reference is in Exodus 17 verse 14, and the oldest is in Job 13 verse 26. Written is found 282 times, wrote 60 times, scribe 120 times, and scriptures 53 times. Concordance search. There are 81 verses using various forms of the word search in a King James Bible. Six of those are found in the book of Proverbs. Read through those six verses to get an idea of who is searching and what they are searching for. You might like to do the same with the book of Job, which contains 12 references to the word search. Read. Job chapter 28 is a companion chapter to Proverbs chapter 25. It is about things that are hidden from everyone except God. Job 28 verse 12 introduces the search for wisdom. Where is it found? In Job 28 verse 20, God asks from whence wisdom comes. Wisdom is concealed in God. If men will seek for wisdom, they will find God, and if men will seek for God, they will find wisdom. Finer, 
The word finer is found only one time in the King James Bible, which is in Proverbs 25, verse 4. A finer is a refiner, as can be determined by searching the scriptures for combinations of silver, dross, and refine. The nation of Israel will be tried in a fiery furnace of affliction, known as the Great Tribulation, in order to purify the nation for the service of God. Consider the following. Isaiah 1 verses 24 to 26. Isaiah 48 verse 10. Ezekiel 22 verses 17 to 22. Zechariah 13 verse 9. Malachi 3 verse 3. Soft words. Job chapter 41 about Leviathan, who is Satan, the great red dragon. In verses 3 and 4, we see a connection between soft words and making a covenant. The Antichrist is a man who will be indwelt by Satan during the final three and one half years of the tribulation. He will speak soft words to the nation of Israel and persuade them to make a covenant with him and worship him. Daniel 9 verse 27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Daniel 11 verse 21, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Revelation 12 verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Concordance search. Search for all forms of the word backbite. You should find four references, including the words backbiteth, backbiters, and backbitings. Study the words in context. Backbiting is found in three lists of sins. Backbiting is not a good thing, but it is a good thing to be angry at sin. Read Ephesians 4 verse 26, understanding that God approves of righteous anger. Psalms 7 verse 11, 139 verses 22 to 24, Mark 3 verse 5. Concordance search. There are five results for the words righteous and fall as used together in the book of Proverbs. Read through these results to see that it is always the wicked that falls, but never the righteous. In chapter 24, when a just man falls, he rises up again. Proverbs 24 verse 16, For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. If you search for wicked and fall in Bible Gateway, you will find them together 13 times. This makes an interesting study if you have the time, particularly 2 Samuel 3 verse 34, when David mourns the death Abner, who did not fall as a man, falleth before wicked men. Concordance search. Find the words broken and city as used together in a King James Bible. All of these refer to the city of Jerusalem. That city was broken down by their enemies because of the nation of Israel rejected the word of God. Israel was punished for 70 years, and then God allowed them to go back and rebuild the wall and the temple during the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, though on a much smaller scale than that of King Solomon's day. Read, Isaiah chapter 24 is a companion chapter to understand the condition, both spiritual and physical, of a broken down city without walls. 